Candyman Lives in this rendition of Candyman 2021. The movie is a sequel to the 1992 horror classic that depicts a black man being wrongfully accused and murdered with his spirit living on terrorizing his victims only if you repeat his name a certain number of times. Y'all, I ain't trying to do it. I'm not going to do it. Y'all can do it if you want to. And we'll see how it works out, okay? All right. <laughs> so the film is directed by Nia DaCosta and produced by Ian Cooper, Wynn Rosenfield, and Jordan Peele. So the film runs with this urban legend that Candyman still exists and haunts the Cabrini Green projects located in Chicago. However, Cabrini Green is now undergoing regentrification and the project homes are abandoned, but new businesses and new homes are surrounding the area. Let's just talk about the uh, cinematography, you guys. The cinematography in this movie is great. When it comes on and the opening credits are coming in, you can see the city of Chicago upside down. So if I had to put a picture in your mind or paint a picture in your mind, it's like you are laying down and you're floating face up and all you see are the beautiful skyscrapers in Chicago above you. So it's very beautiful, but yet it's very eerie. And, you know, since I'm a movie buff, I always look at how things are set up and I try to understand what the director wants me to see. So I took viewing the Chicago skyscrapers or skylines face up means something is going to rise because when you're lying down you get up you rise so something that is buried is coming back up it's going to be a new beginning so the storyline surrounds up and coming artist anthony mccoy who's played by yaya abdul martin ii now i want to say this this man is sexy y'all he had his shirt off in the movie I didn't even know to run to him or run from him, honey. He was a whole snack. He was looking good the whole time. Crazy and all. Crazy and all. Anyway, Anthony has a boo thing named Brianna who works as an art curator at a local art gallery. And one of the things I loved about their relationship is I love the black love, y'all. Brianna was so poised and beautiful in this film. Her style was always on point. And did I mention Anthony? You know, he was shirtless, y'all. He was shirtless. And I just literally just want to just go into singing, honey. Just singing. Take my money, my house and my car. All right, all right, all right. Never mind, honey. So let me just get back to the movie. I'm doing the most over here. So anyway, Anthony is a struggling artist. And like many artists, he wants to be inspired, okay? His goal is to have a solo show in an art gallery one day, which is cool, you know? I mean, if he was my man, I would support him, okay? I would support him, and I would stand beside him. He may be a little crazy, but you know what? We will work through this. We will work through this, Anthony, okay? So one night, Brianna was, like, having a dinner party, and her brother named Troy and his boyfriend were over there. And through some casual conversation, Troy brought up the legend of Candyman. So the story it was a bit different from the 1992 version but it still involves some of the characters from the film and i think this part i felt like i probably should have re-watched 1992 version before i watched this one to just make sure but it still depicted um some things about the the story from 1992 i don't want to give too much away but it, it still depicted some of that i want you guys to still go see for yourself this is just a summary okay so anyways, when Anthony heard the story, he was like pretty intrigued and he wanted to find out more and he wanted to do more research. So he did. He started asking questions. He was going around town and he even tried to see if the urban legend was true by saying his name in the mirror. OK, so meanwhile. Uh, while he was doing his research and stuff like that, what, what ended up happening, he did get inspired. So he managed to create a beautiful piece of mixed media artwork, and it was displayed in the gallery. So, um, and real quick, y'all, just I like for people to know exactly what I'm talking about. So 
if you want to know what mixed media art is, mixed media is artwork that combines a variety of media in one piece. So you can have like an oil painting that includes some fabric and just like some sequins or something like that. So it's, it's just different textures of artwork all together in one piece. I mean, everybody probably has like mixed media art in their home or something. So so it's, it's just combined like almost like 3D artwork pretty much. So anyways, Anthony's piece makes it to the gallery and, you know, it got mixed reviews. Some people liked it and some people didn't. So he was a little disappointed, you know. And when the event ended, you know, Anthony went home, everybody went home, they were chilling or whatever. You know, a couple of people stayed behind and, you know, someone tried it, child. Like someone called this man's name and he appeared and he showed up and showed out. OK, so. What ended up happening, of course, you know, um, the you know, uh, something happened in the art gallery, like a murder happened, right? And so, with the murder surrounding Anthony's piece, um, uh, you know, he started to get publicity, and this is you know what he wanted, right? So, you know, and you know what the saying is any publicity is good publicity. So, when his name was making the headlines, he was like, okay, all right, you know what I'm saying? This is this might not be so bad. So what ended up happening was he becomes more inspired and more obsessed. So he starts, you know, just painting more and he just, you know, and kept painting and just kept digging into the story. And the more he dug into the story, the more that he started to see a connection with a connection with the urban legend. And his girlfriend became very concerned because he was just like acting crazy and just started to look different you know so there was a scene um in particular where anthony got stuck in an elevator like he got stuck into the elevator and he came face and face with the entity but it did not hurt him and i felt like this was the writer's way of showing anthony's struggle with life and death a beginning and an end and that he was stuck and the outcome of him being stuck between these two floors was eventually you won't have to choose dude like what you want to do what what, what what you gonna do what are you gonna do okay so he he's gonna eventually have to choose and as more murder and more chaos spread it across the city anthony did more digging and found his true connection to the urban legend now in the end of the original um in the end okay this is the part i really like you guys in the end y'all the original candy man played by tony ty appeared and i was like ah! you know because I, I love when people play homage you know to the original ogs you know i love that i loved it i love it i loved it y'all better give tony his flowers Give Tony his flowers, his scary looking self. Yes, Tony. So it was, it was good. That was, that was, that was everything for me. So anyway, real quickly, overall, the film was good. I love the cinematography, the screenplay, and the directing were also very good. I also loved how they took modern day events of murdering unarmed, harmless people can have long term effects on society, as well as you know talking about gentrification. And let me take this back. Uh, uh, when I said um, modern day events of murder on um, harmless people, we're just going to talk about, let's leave out the part about modern day, just murdering on um, harmless people. Okay. We're going to just say that. And um, I like that, you know, they took that storyline and, and, and took a deeper dive in, in that. Um, so I recommend that you guys go see it, go see it, take your friends, take your, take your man, just take your girlfriend, go see it. Let me know in the comments uh, what you think about it because I want to know your thoughts. And by all means, you guys, whatever you do, don't say his name. All right, so if you like what you see here and heard today, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel for more interviews, commentary, and all things DFW. Bye!